Disclaimer, when watching this video, I expect you to have a basic understanding of almost all characters in previous House Pets videos I've done. Like, watch those first, especially the one about Marion. I... Th this one goes over multiple plot lines, over two plot lines mostly because all the way until the most recent page, so it is important to understand the story thus far first. So this actually starts before the Marin plot line, and also before Thomas even became a camel and Herman became a badger. So it's it starts with Herman uh, criticizing Keen's spending habits. Who I'm... I've explained before, but he's a very rich ferret that fights for animal rights. Decides to go out in a temp go out out in a temple for answers, but but despite there being no people inside, he gets knocked out, which sucks. Okay, this next thing technically happens first, but I thought it would be important to set the stage first. This is what actually happens first. Is this character, uh, Rez. Rez? How do I pronounce this? I'll look it up. Well, apparently it's, uh, more similar to Rez, but also Rass, I guess? I'm calling him Rass. Ross is going to continue working on his book, but gets too anxious and afraid of what people might say, so he goes to visit his friend, Grape, and if you've seen anything House Pets, you probably know about her and her brother, Peanut. I've explained them multiple times and don't want to again, so watch another video for that. So, so Ross... Uh, meets up with both of them to cool off mentally for a bit, and they decide to go LARPing. <laughs> Except there's an actual prize involved, because it's like a thing run by Keen. They sign up for this little- for that little thing, and meanwhile, Keen gets visited by Briel, who's an angel. Okay, back to those two cats and that dog. They're joined by the ghost of another dog that Peanut used to know as well. Thing is that that's actually happening a lot right now. <laughs> Things from heaven coming down constantly. For this half of the plot line. The big plot line. But Grape's... Boyfriend. A dark gray cat named Max. Maybe he's black, I don't know. It's going to. Uh, all but Rufus get costumes from paper bags, which I don't know why Rufus did not get one. They do have, unfortunately, they all do have, like, a bit of competition. Who also have actual costumes instead of just paper bags. Meanwhile, there, there's Hermes and Tom... <laughs> Herman and Thomas watching, planning on getting the treasure themselves. Except Herman. Except Herman just ditches Thomas and leaves. We have three groups, our, our group... Thomas and the rivals. Raz immediately falls into a hole upon entering. Uh, he, of course, lands on his feet because Cat, I don't know why I wrote this into the script, he encounters a monster. First time they realize this isn't a set, but, and well, get clues to it. Uh, Grape and Max atten intentionally fall down the hole to help Rez. They both become ninjas on the way down because this place is magic and their hats say ninja on them and they kind of become their costume. That sounds weird, but the points they're both in, the points are, the point is they're both ninjas now. And Raz already defeated the monster using his cool new were-tiger powers. They're gonna wait for Peanut so can, never mind, he jumped down the hole, uh, and Rufus did too. There's five of them down there now, all five of them. They decided to keep going 
instead of trying to find a way out. This will be important for it later, but there's one bag left, and Peanut hasn't made his hat yet and is thinking of what to do with it, because he has no ideas, which is, which is like, okay, yeah, I feel like he'd have an idea quickly. Meanwhile, Briel seems pretty confused by Keen's plan with this, because quality is what Keen wants, so he, he's putting people against each other. Focus on our group again. They're being attacked again by a lot of monsters. They ended up also running into the rivals in. Oh. Uh, hi there. Hi, Kitsune. Yeah, he's been here just watching. It's not explained, though, why he's here. Just thought it was worth mentioning. And, like, he doesn't do much here either. Our group gets stuck at a puzzle. Peanut messes up and almost falls to his death. He gets rescued by Mungo, a police dog who came with Fox, Sabrina, Tara, and the physical incarnations of Spring and Summer, <laughs> who are with Fox for some reason. <laughs> They're trying to keep Keen from getting his paws on the mana pool at the bottom, which is, is what he's trying to get them to go for. Yay. And after they take a break, uh, and after spending a little time together... Tara and the others just ditch every ditch the one our main four. Like even Rufus just ditches them. <laughs> like why? You know, finally said his ability though, and it's a cheat. <laughs> power basic, a cheat power basically. Um, it's the answers to all puzzles now. Okay, the others run into the rivals who are just stuck at a puzzle now and. Gang arrives just for Peter to solve the puzzle immediately because of his cheat power. <laughs> Rivals are upset by this cheat power because they've been stuck and Peanut solved it instantly. Now, Thomas has found the gold. A lot of it. But it's cursed, and now he's a camel. It's a way to turn back, but it's going to take a while to find. Now, the other three groups are teaming up, probably because they want Peanut. That's cheat powers. They eventually reach the bottom floor, though, uh, and at some point they split up again, and at some points they split up again on the way. Uh, Karishad the fox ends up kicking out one of the rivals for damaging the temple, though, so it's just the other two. The, so, uh, yeah, the, one of the group members is gone. Didn't write their names into the script for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, our group just snuck past them all. Uh, well, well, uh, Tara tells Peanut to stop and doesn't. Peanut instead calls her out for the uh, ditching. <laughs> Suddenly, Keenan Briel appear as well. Tara is about to stop them before Keen uses his tail to make her sneeze. She and some of the others end up in the mana pool. Briel tries to keep Keen out of it until he calms down. Keen yells at him and Briel accidentally opens a portal to hell. A monster called The Forgotten comes through and this sort of uh, manifestation of emotions that Briel was, is feeling. Try to fight it but get wiped out. Drags Briel to hell and all it leaves is the memory of it like for, for the most part. Like there is a bit more conflict with it but that's not important so keen follows into the portal to hell and gets grabbed by a a little a little demon a little demon dude starts following him around there's another demon you don't which like i'm pronouncing it like that i have no idea how to pronounce it but like there's a quote that makes me gives me a clue so Keen needs directions from him, but uh, meanwhile, Taro is trying to get everyone to leave the temple while she drains them in a pool. She's not very successful in it right now. Eventually, Keen gets you to, you don't to bring him to the place Briel is being kept, but now he's being forced to work. A little demon helps Keen break free and find Briel, though. Briel's doing okay because he. He's already dead and can't feel the pain. <laughs> so, <laughs> so outside of hell, Raz is actually helping Tara to drain the mana pool, which is pretty cool. 
And Thomas has almost figured out how to turn back before the temple starts crumbling. And then King figures out how to... Uh, f- f- just kidding. Briel figured that out. Then they kiss. Uh, yeah. The two managed to escape narrowly with that demon that Keen actually agreed to bring back to Earth. If he helped him. Raz and Terra managed to get to, to close the portal before anything else follows Keen. That demon just disappears and everyone got out alive. Except the ones that were already dead. But there's there's still the same amount of dead. Th- this turned out well. Raz has finished planning out his book and Thomas returns to tell Herman what happened. And Keen... It was going on and already called the cops on both. Thomas used the coin that was left on Herman, turning him into the badger we know him as. Keen decides to also step down from his position, uh, passing it along to Lana, his sister. Briel was about to leave, but decides to incarnate. Incar- uh, which just... It's his little halo taken away. <laughs> Fortunately, Spring and Summer did have to leave. Rufus leaves as well, we and we get introduced to the Fox... No, wait. So we get to see the Fox Kits, Craig and Drake, uh, who are actually just the mortal forms of Dragon and Pete. I literally don't know which one is which. Like, I know, like, one of them's Dragon, one of them's Pete. Like, I know them by name, but, like, I don't know which one is which by appearance. I would end this here, but the plot line has a continuation several years later. This is after Marion's storyline. So go back and watch that video. Starts with Lana being interviewed and Keen, who I thought stepped down. Basically, he comments on humans being turned into animals, which, like, he still has some influence, which makes sense. And how then trying to get... Their rights back is helping the ECP, which is the opposite of what Herman was trying to do. Cursing people. Herman's complaining about it not working to a little bird named Trinket that's now his friend. And that little little demon that vanished promises Herman and Trinket it can be traded for more power. Meanwhile, Marion gets rejected by yet another college due to him being a squirrel. Talks to Lois about it and how it's not fair. They kiss and Sasha witnesses it, thinking Lois is trying to eat Marion. So S- Sasha came to tell them about the new person that's going to be sharing this. F- they're they're going to be sharing this free home with Todd. He's kind of a jerk. He's also an adorable red panda. But more importantly, he's a jerk, and I hate his face. His mom came with him and embarrassed him. Really quickly. Keen was also bribing the colleges to accept animals, but that wasn't working, and he's running out of money to bribe with. And back to Herman. The little guy summoned you don't, you don't, to get Herman to make a deal with him. And because of that, Katsuni gets a kind of magical quarantine zone thing put around the city because of that. Well, actually, like, part of the city. Everyone gets sent to a replication of their city in heaven. Uh, except, uh, there, except, uh, Craig and Drake are missing, and the, there's plenty of food, and Marion got accepted into college with a really weird message. Fox encourages Spring and I'm, wait, Fox encounters Spring and Summer as he's realizing what's going on. Ter- er, oh. Taro starts demanding answers as to why they were brought here. Finds out about you don't. Taro goes to tell Kitsune he went. He, he won't be able to see you don't and needs mortals to help out. Uh, like a certain doggo. No, not Peanut. Taro. Oh, Briel's also stuck on Earth. Let's 
go over everyone going down. Keen Taro uh, kicks, which like, which like she's the mother of the mortal cr- versions of Dragon and Pete, Craig and Drag, in which those three make perfect sense. Like Tara's literally the one that kept bringing this up, and then like. <laughs> And Karashad, which I don't know why he decided to go. And then Marion and Lo- Marion, Lois, and Todd so that they can return to being human. Uh, they, they make, the minute they get there, they make the classic bad decision splitting up. You don't makes the cursed coin into three bits. One piece is given to the little guy who then t- takes his true form, the evil half of Bria, and just leaves. And is now after Briel. Um, Marion seems to forget his deal with Kitsune as well. After all this, he's going to turn the a duo and Todd back human. Uh, Kix does find the kids, which is why she wanted to go down. Which I mentioned already. They located two of the three they're looking for downtown and two of the three demons downtown and and uh in the Milton Manor let's go there first Keen reunites with Briel and I didn't mention it before but they are uh, a canon couple Briel was just baking the whole time and then evil Briel who I won't really use the name I who won't really use any of the main three names for two to prevent confusion for reasons one because one for the fact that it sounds slightly like something offensive but like I don't want to risk it and I don't and it's not offensive and I'm just not gonna I'll be calling him Negative. So Negative tries chewing power lines and stuff. And the duo decides to leave. To go back to the smaller house Keen owns. Karashad arrives and tells them what's gonna happen. And that a demon's there. And Keen gets in a car and starts driving. Only to... And runs over negative and then crashes into the into a wall. Real and Keen are okay and and negative is too. They keep moving around the house to avoid negative, who's locked all possible who's blocked all possible exits. Now back to Taro. She is with Marion and he is uh, Todd and Lois driving downtown. Oh. Can't see any humans though. Around just animals. That they they that only realize they're animals until someone mentions it to them. Yeah, cause these are humans. <laughs> they find this out by mentioning it to an Ardvark who of course doesn't realize is an Ardvark they film in on their group and what they get in the end being human again. Marion questions it a bit and Todd being the jerk he is mocks him for it. They find a massive demon and it looks like oh that's Herman. (laughs) That's Herman Stewart. He grabs the car with everyone inside. They realize who it is, and Tara tries to explain it. Everyone in the car argues and stuff, and now we're back to Keen and Briel. The duo get away from negative, only for Karashad to finally show up with a ladder. <laughs> Try to get they try to get help from Kitsune after running, but he's distracted talking to Kix. He decides to tell her who Craig and Drake really were before. Uh, out all the stuff of 
Kitsune and Kicks unknowingly get Keen and Briel captured. Taro... Uh... Taro makes a plan to... To distract Herman so they can get Kitsune. Which we know... How it went with Keen. Trick Herman into slashing the... Car. Setting them free. They split up to make themselves... Harder to catch. Todd gets caught by someone else. And... It's kind of embarrassing for him. And... Tara, Lois... And that artwork get caught. But Marion, using his size as an advantage... Evades everything... And climbs to the top of the radio tower, which alerts Kitsune somehow. There's an epic fight, and of course, Herman loses. Because... Uh, and... Returns to normal. Because of that, Herman and Bert and uh, Trinket... Can't... Uh, mention, uh, f- a coin fusing them into a demon, normal, well, like, no- demon them was cruel, but normal of them are extremely apologetic for now. Thank God, I like cruel Herman. I love when he's a jerk. And Tara starts calling out how irresponsible Kitsune has been, and how it's his fault this got so out of hand. This isn't over yet. Udon is a huge threat right now and is likely at, after a mana pool in Egypt. Kitsune leaves everyone behind to handle it himself, while Negative is trying to absorb Brie and uh, making two household, but not in a good way. He absorbs a little bit of Brie soul and has... Instant regret for all he di- did today. And, ha- and the trinket and and the, and then Herman and, and Negative are all working with the others now to stop you don't. Uh and are and are in Keen's freaking private jet. Okay Trinket and Karashad actually stayed back. The rest are going to Egypt. They arrive, and Ardvark just ditches everyone. And when they get to the temple, it's already ruined. The back strategy from earlier, like the last temple, will not work because there is no temple. Herman can dig through the rubble to still get inside, and they find a strange void. They all find Kitsune and Yudaunt fighting over a mana pool. Tara's like, we we should throw Craig and Dragon in, and Kix is like, no. And then they, but they start trying to get in with Todd getting wiped out instantly. You know, I'm not unhappy. Uh, but what if they do it to my girl Taro? And then they do it to Briel, and then Kix, which like uh, Kix was actually fine. Uh, she just got knocked off and couldn't move that way. And then... And then Keen... And Lois and Marion. And, and thankfully, Ta- uh, Taro is about to get the kids... N- n- no! No! But... The, yeah, but hey, the kids became their former selves. But, but Taro... No. But now, epic three versus one fight time. Uh, Pete, Dragon, and Kitsune versus you don't. He was no match for for the three of them, and it was over insanely quickly. Now to bring everyone back. There's a heartfelt moment between Pete and Kix. He just... Who just fell, what, like I mentioned. Pete and Dragon decide to live full mortal lives after, though. And leaving the temple, it's... The old dying in there just kicks you out. So all is well other than Todd still being a whiny 
basically, now they get to choose a reward for each of them. Todd and Lois both know that they want to return to being human, but Keen dislikes that and wants them to stay animals to benefit the ECP, which I get it. They just saved the world, let them have what they want. Yes, even that, even Todd. But Marion doesn't know what he wants grown to like being a squirrel and doesn't want to change because the world doesn't accept him. He wants the world to change to accept him as he is. But as a response, uh, a proposal is made. All of humanity is turned into animals and shockingly revealed that Todd was doing all this for attention. But everyone agrees. Uh, the rest is just the aftermath. There's there's a news broadcast about it, and plant-based meat has been perfected. No downsides. Zoo animals are now citizens the same as pets and wild animals, too. Her Herman got hired again for some reason. Marion finally gets accepted to college, and Pete and Jack and are Craig and Drake again, and Kitsune is now Kits. Basically, the three are going through full mortal lives, but without the memories from before... I can't believe him. You know what? Just, just read the comic. You can skip to the last page and see what I don't want to read. <laughs> but now the comic's over for the time being. I still have many stories to talk about until then. But this video ain't over yet. So first of all, I don't think Marion and Lois are, will have much major story involvement from now on. And I honestly think their story needs to end no matter how much I love it. Like... It could easily appear in, like, the jokes and stuff and, like, the, like some at, some clips of the, uh, some parts of people at, adapting, but, like, that's about it. And even, even, and sadly, I think we're going to have to say goodbye to Villain Herman, which is what I liked about him, but there's a lot of stories to tell of characters adapting anyway. Also, would Peanut and Grace's parents be cats or dogs? I need to know. Anyway, we might have an excuse to see Jessica more frequently. Yay! Oh, Tara, Keen, and Briel definitely aren't going anywhere either. But that's all. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you all soon. Hopefully.